Welcome back everyone to The Balance Beam. This is your host Nikita Thigpen and I for one am completely filled with energy and excitement this morning because I am welcoming such an amazing special guest. And I know you always hear me say that because all of my guests are amazing and special. But today I'm introducing you to a woman that's mentored over 20,000 people. She's coached directly over 7,000 people. She's been on Fox, NBC, Lifestyle TV, and she hosts her own show. I welcome you, the corporate coach, the host of Ask Bon Bon TV, Miss Bonnie Bruder. Welcome to the show today, Bonnie. Thank you so much, Shakita. It's such a pleasure to be here today. We are so excited to have you on the balance beam. I can't tell you, and I probably have said it at least 20 times already, how amazing this feels to have someone like you who's been there, done that, and still doing it, able to share with us how you're able to juggle all the balls that line up with your amazing life and still have a little bit of sanity. Tell everyone who doesn't know you the way I do a little bit about you and why you're juggling so much simultaneously. <laughs> So, um, firstly, thank you for that amazing introduction, and I do, I am a professional juggler, amongst other things, because I do have a lot of products, uh, products, I do have a lot of products, I have a lot of projects simultaneously um, going on, and just a little bit about my background, since you asked, I've been in human potential for 20 years, and I got my start back in 1995, I went to my first Tony Robbins seminar, and it was like the gateway drug for me, I was hooked. Um, I wanted more. Fast forward, I then had a 20-year career. I spent 10 of those years working with Tony Robbins organization. I was hand-trained by him. Um, I toured and lived all around the globe and coached his clients and led firewalk seminars and, as you said, coached over 7,000 people um, during that period of time. And then I left there um, with kind of a big promotion and I went to another company called the Academy of Wealth and Achievement and was the director of production there. So I helped produce all of the um, events in North America. Um, we certified people in neuro-linguistic programming, hypnotherapy, uh, presentation and platform skills. So not only am I certified in all of these modalities and coaching, and I have 10 certifications in all, um, including most recently Columbia University, but I was basically in a seminar room watching over and over again these technologies and people learning. So to me, I always say I'm bilingual. Um, I speak English and then I also speak human potential. And it's just a natural second language that I can utilize and pull out you know, in any conversation. And then in 2008, I decided to go out on my own and I started my own brand of coaching, Bonnie and Ritter Coaching and also The Corporate Coach. And I've authored three books. I have multiple audio programs. I have a really fun online university called Create You, which delivers video content. And I am also an inventor. Um, I invented Dirty Dog, which is the first antibacterial paw spray for dogs, and then also Steels, um, which is a soon to be patented product for women's heels. I can't tell too much more because we're in um, contract for that. So, and those are just. So to answer your question, why I'm juggling so many things, um, you know, I've been blessed working for these incredible minds, and I've seen what is possible from a human potential standpoint. You know, when you work with Tony Robbins, and I worked with Harvey McKay for three years, they maximize every single second. They're up sometimes at 4.30 in the morning, they work out. So modeling is a big technique that I learned from there, and you model their behavior. You see, not, I don't necessarily want to be on planes traveling around the world, mm -hmm. working from 4.30 in the morning until midnight, but if I want to be up at 5.30 and spend time with my dog every day and do my own work-life balance, I know how to do that because I saw it at a very high level. So I almost feel like it's a responsibility to get you know these techniques and these tools out to the world, which leads me to my current project, which is the Ask Bon Bon Show um, that airs here on the Lifestyle Channel in New York. And now, crazy, it's being nationally syndicated on multiple cable channels um, throughout the US. But really, I took all of the knowledge, all of the learnings, all of the information, created this massive transmedia platform. So we literally get people millions and millions of views, um, not only through TV, through radio, podcasting. We just created this massive engine um, because I think it's so important. Over my 20 years, I've met so many incredible people 
And I want to be able to give back and shine my light in the world by telling their stories. So that's what our whole show is about. We just interview interesting and amazing people that are making a difference in the world. Well, you are interesting, amazing, and making a difference in the world, to say the <laughs> least. First of all, I did not know you were an inventor. That's incredible. Thank um, you. Being a creative is one thing. Being a maker is something completely different because it's just a whole nother element of tapping into your, your inside genius when it comes to being a creative. And that's something that a lot of my clients struggle with. They have a hard time. They're all high achievers, but they have a hard time moving what I call beyond excellent, go, stretching themselves. So where I come in is to challenge them to their next level of greatness and helping them kind of get out of their way. And you're a perfect example. Where were you 10 years ago when I started this? <laughs> you're a perfect example of what it looks like when you do that. You're a great example. Thank you. I was here 10 years ago. I've been doing this for 20 years. and um, But I also never needed to be, it was never my mission to be, you know, in the main limelight. I didn't, mm -hmm. although I love and learn from, you know, the Tony Robbins and the Harvey McKay's, that wasn't the life I wanted for myself. So I've grown more naturally and virally. Um, I'd say now we've hit the tipping point with the, you know, the television show that will now be national. That was always my goal and my dream. Um, but, you know, I, I also want other things. I want a family. I want a relationship. And balance is really important to me. And sometimes you sacrifice that, you know, when you go down a different path. So, um, so yeah. So I, I definitely have been here. And I'm glad we found each other now because I, I would love, you know, I have powerful mentors. And I that is number one, no argument, the reason why I've been able to create success from, you know, my family members to, I always say I grew up, you know, Tony Robbins and Harvey McKay, they raised me. I grew up in that world because I learned from the masters. And so now, you know, it's an honor when people say, um, I admire what you've done. I don't, it doesn't resonate with me because I'm still, I, I just have them. So I have cream time. I feel like, you know, I've been blessed with these mentors. So it's just kind of my duty to give it back to people. And you are, when you're a giver, which is what you are naturally, when you're a giver in the way you are, everything grows organically because you've stimulated the earth in the way that you have with your vision. You believe that you can do it. And that's the most important piece of anything you do. And then, of course, you've obviously spoken life into your vision by speaking to your mentors, speaking to your advisors, making sure that you continue to talk about it to people you know, across the world, across the nation, and encourage them in their own dream. You've breathed life into where you are right now. So to see it manifest itself is expected more than anything else. It's an, an, it's an expected um, moment, more so than you know a dream come true. You have done it and it's, it's just incredible. I'm excited to watch. Now, I do have a question for you though, because you yeah. mentioned you know, the balance of life that you know, is and was and will be for you in terms of you know, creating a family and you know, relationships and all the other elements that go with creating your whole success. There's boundaries that come into play, not only with your time, but some of your platonic relationships that have come with that. We know family and girlfriends and boyfriends and all those things can be a little draining at times, especially when you're you're juggling, not to overuse the word, but when you're juggling so much at one time, that's something that you have to balance um, in a very soft way because you don't want to hurt people's feelings. You don't want to push them away or make them feel like if they're not a part of your project at the moment that they can't be a part of your life. How are you managing those relationships, platonic and otherwise? Sure. So I have a secret weapon and um, she's right here. This is little Ginger. Hi, Hi Ginger. <laughs> And Ginger taught me about life. Ginger is my mentor. She is a very powerful entrepreneur. She she was the um, the idea girl for Dirty Dog, which is our global pet company. But what happened in my life is my pattern was always go, 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 push, push, push. I was an Ironman triathlete. I was traveling the world. I was do you know working for Tony, building my own brand, writing books, doing all these things. And at the expense of, I would always hit a wall. I had massive health challenges in the past that I've since overcome. Um, my pattern was always just to get to exhaustion and then, you know, screw things up. Like if you're dating or in a relationship and then, ah, and it all falls apart. So 
Ginger came into my life five years ago. I inherited her in an emergency situation. Um, one of the clients I was working for, Alex Mendozian, at the time they had a family tragedy, and thankfully the little girl recovered, but his daughter um, almost died, and she was in a coma for 10 days. And so I had to get Ginger, and I had no contact with the family. So I didn't know what I was doing. I have this busy life. I'm jet setting around. I'm working for Harvey McKay. So I just was kind of forced to bring her along. I threw her in a bag, I popped on a flight, she stayed at the Ritz. Um, but immediately I fell in love with this girl and she taught me that nothing else is more important. My favorite times of the day are in the morning when I wake up, you know, she wakes me up with little kisses and then we go for a walk. And I just walk, I watch her little prance and how happy she is. And then I watch her run around at the park and nothing else matters. That became the most important thing for me. So that just taught me a lot about life and looking at some of the things I was engaging in and whether they were important to me anymore. Um, and when I started getting things off that were not as important and critical to my mission because of her mainly, that really shifted everything for me. And it's a constant management. I mean, I feel terrible because when I do this TV show that we do, we interview six guests a week and people want to have a relationship and they want to meet with you and they want you to see their business and so forth. And I simply can't because I am responsible for doing that and doing that properly so I can get their message out. And I hate to, you know, a lot of times people get hurt feelings or they want me to come see their facility or something. And, you know, I, I have learned that it's my responsibility to be 100% on for what I'm doing. And I can't do that if I'm, if I'm following all these bright, shiny objects. So I have become really clear in my life about what's most important, you know, what I can spend time on and what I need personally to recharge in the role. And, you know, sometimes that's green juice every morning, being able to meditate, going to dance classes with girlfriends. Sometimes it's, you know, half a bottle of good wine and laughing with your friends on the roof. It, but I've learned that both are okay, you know, mm -hmm. and whatever you need, always asking. Like the other day I was exhausted. We had had, we'd filmed all day. We had amazing experiences. I had school till 10 at night. And on the way home, I just felt my mind just start, you can't do that, you know, the, the negative talk that comes in. Mm -hmm. And I just said, shush, like, this is just, you just need to get through one more hour. Like, what will make you feel good in this hour? And I thought, you know what, a nice yummy snack, binge watching a couple of my favorite shows, I'm going to feel better in the morning. And so I came home from school, grabbed Gingy, snuggled up, and did that, and I woke up, again, with 100% passion. That's, I woke up to the USA Today article on my show, and I really believe that you have to do that. You know, when you're a pusher, when you're an entrepreneur, when you're a go-getter, you feel like you have this this compulsion to always have it be great and always have positive feelings, and sometimes it's not. And when it's not, you just ask yourself, what do I need in this moment to feel better? And that's been the biggest shift for me, and that in itself creates balance because you know, you know, what calls to take. But it's not important to return every call by the end of the day. It's important to, when you're returning a call, be 100% and be present and, and so forth. And, you know, so you do have to be selective and you have to be careful. My family knows far and away it's family first. My mom taught me that. So I can be doing anything, even how, and if my brother, one of my three brothers calls or my dad and like, hold, can you hold on a second? Okay, dad, you know, let me call you back. You know, and knowing that, knowing where you stand um, and what's important to you is really critical to work-life balance. Absolutely, you hit so many positive points and so many things that I want to highlight and just recap for a minute for all the balance beamers who are listening right now. Bonnie just said some incredible things in her own way. Be comfortable with your no and be okay with your yes. If your yes is I'm going to binge on a little bit of TV and a glass of wine, assuming that medically you can have those things, um, enjoy it and be okay with that. Because if that's what you need to help recharge you or refuel you in that moment after you've just poured out, hopefully, your best self, that's okay. If you need to say no to someone who is incredible themselves, has a great spirit, but you know that giving them a piece of your time or energy is pulling away from what your purpose to do, then you're doing a disservice to your purpose. You're not necessarily just, you know, quote unquote, hurting their feelings. That may happen, although intentions do mean a lot. And if you are not intending to hurt someone's feelings, but you're just being honest with yourself and being committed to your purpose and to use Bonnie's words to not chase shiny objects, it is really important for you to say, I have to stay focused 
me being focused on my purpose is the best way for me to give out everything I have to the world. And although I would love to go see what someone's facility or take a little bit extra time to talk about an idea or a business plan or whatever the case may be, maybe that's something that I can enjoy, enjoy later a little bit more after I've done this part of my purpose because this is what I was designed to do. Whatever you're supposed to be mindful of in that moment, which mindfulness, of course, is all about being present. And I know Bonnie knows a lot about that. But for all of you who don't, you need to be mindful in every single thing you do. Right now, Bonnie could be doing 25 other things than sitting on the morning show with the balance beam and having this conversation and giving all of her heart to you. And she could be thinking about the five other things she needs to do in the next 20 minutes. But I know her well enough to know that she's being mindful about what she's sharing, what she's giving, and making sure she's completely 100% present in the moment with you, especially because she's powered by Ginger, and I know Ginger would get her if she wasn't. So... <laughs> Yes, no, it, it's very true, and thank you. And mindfulness and presence is incredibly important. It's something that I work on constantly through meditation. I wouldn't even say work on it, it's more play on. It's something that I know, um, you know, Tony Robbins taught me about your hour of power. Every morning you start your day off strong, and if you can't do an hour, do 30 minutes. If you can't do that, do 15. If you can't do that, do five. But when I feel like life is going a little haywire, I have a litmus test. I always look at my purse. And if my purse is organized, I'm someone that always sits on, I like to maximize every minute. So if I'm on the subway, I'm cleaning, I'm organizing, I'm throwing away receipts, I'm getting, you know, bills in order. Um, but if I look at my purse and it's cattywampus and there's just, you know, lipsticks and this, and God knows what's in there, pair of nylons, you know, you just never know. Um, I go, okay, you need to stop. Like, you need to, when you get home, you need to meditate. You need to take Ginger to the park. You need to do something because things are a little bit off kilter right now. And I find by just doing that and disengaging from, you know, that ah, that we all have, it changes everything. And then I come back 20 minutes later. Okay, right. What needs to be done now, 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 and now? And um, and that's been very helpful. And I'll, I'll find myself, again, if I feel that noise is getting too loud, I'll just find a meditation center in New York and I'll go, you know, Friday night. I did that last Friday night. And I just said, okay, that's it. It's getting things are moving a little too fast. Let's slow it down. That's and fresh and it's amazing. Yeah, that's a really good point. I don't think enough people understand the power of being still. Um, some people are uncomfortable with the term meditation. What I found when I speak with people is because they feel like they're going to have to stop life, which I help them understand in my own little way, depending on who I'm talking to. It's all about taking literally giving yourself no pun intended because we do do an event with this exact name giving yourself permission to pause so that you can have everything you need to continue to push yourself and for me push means positive use of skills for healing so if your purpose is to give everything you have in what whatever way angle or design you're supposed to do it as a creative as a maker um, as a, a teacher as a healer as an administrator whatever your your reason and design on this earth is for you're pushing towards that purpose every day which means you're pushing through chaos and and tribulation and barriers some that you've created and some that were designed to stop you from getting to that next level. So that push is important, but you can't push if you're on empty. So the fact that you take time and say, listen, let me get off the subway a block early and go to this meditation center or maybe meet up with friends and I'm sure you have a, a piece of quiet with them as well or meditate on your way to something. It's really important for you to do that, to just be still and literally give yourself permission to pause, which is the kind of the other way that I help people understand if they don't like the term meditation for whatever their reasons are, which for some people they're religious, for some people they're other, but just to understand that it's a really important part of their process because we're constantly giving out all the time but you have to restore what you've given out or you're left yeah. on empty for nothing for yourself right right absolutely absolutely yeah and you know i'm i'm all for pushing too like i've got to where i am today by pushing and persevering and beating my head into a brick wall and going the extra mile and you get to a point in life where you realize okay maybe it's time to pull back a bit maybe that that strategy is not needed here and, you know, even just about a month ago, I made a decision in my life. I, I'm a 
I'm a big athlete. I was a triathlete for 10 years, and I'm really into fitness, and I think that that's an important part of being able to do all of these things. Um, and I got into kickboxing about two years ago, and I love it, and I was going to kickboxing class, and it makes you feel good, and you get your questions out, and it's very um, you know, good for toning. And then I just decided, I thought, metaphorically, I don't want to fight anymore. I don't want to fight life. I want to be elegant and graceful and embracing. And so I switched to pole dancing. And it's been fascinating because it's the same sort of workout. You're working the same muscles, but it's a completely different, I feel, metaphorical message for life. So, you know, you have to make decisions constantly like that of like, is this support everything you do? Is this supporting my bigger vision? I don't think it's separate. I think everything in life is all connected. Um, you know, I've been fortunate enough to create a career where I can do my passion. I can do interviews. I can work with people one-on-one -on -one and through the television show. But for me, it, it all, you know, I can't make any decision that doesn't support that. I can't go out and get wasted on a Saturday and be this one person or, you know, not work out and gain 30 pounds and then tell you on television, you can do it. it I have to be consistent with the message. So every decision that I make in life supports that every moment. That's, that's a really good point. So something that comes up a little controversial, um, both in raw moments that I do as well as on the balance beam, is that money mindset that's tied to a lot of the decisions we make. You just mentioned you're a pusher. <laughs> For yeah. people who are just tuning into that moment, we're not talking about drugs. We're talking about <laughs> releasing all your positivity into the world so you can heal people in your own way. And you've pushed yourself to become the best you. And with that, there's there's that question of how, where money plays in how much you're pushing for. Are you pushing to continue to walk into your purpose and into the light that you've you've been designed to do and continue to be an illuminator? Or is it really just based on money? So before you answer that question, let me tell you where I come from with it because I, I like to, to stir the pot a little bit with this and guests have all different levels of their thinking around it. So I believe sure. that money mindset is at the base of every decision we make. We make a subconscious decision around money before we purchase something as small as a, uh, an a organic apple, you know, is this the best price for this? Even into our relationships, when we are looking for a mate subconsciously, you know, through the dating process, of course, we want them to be attractive, to be good spirited, to have be compatible with us. But we're also thinking about, can they help grow me and can I help grow them? And there is some money that's tied to that because money matters. So I'm not talking about money to buy a, a Gucci purse or to do something like that. But money does matter in this world in terms of the way you're able to continue to give back and not have to make decisions out of desperation. We choose love, we choose relationships, we choose friends, we choose schools, we choose a lot of things based on our interpretation of what that means for our future money and of course, how it affects our money now. So I have a really strong belief in it just because of the conversations that I've had with people over 20 years of being a clinician and people sharing all of their decisions. When you tear it down, it comes to some element of feeling safe and that safety related to money and not talking about just physical safety. So what are your thoughts about that in terms of decisions you've made to live a positive life versus your example of, you know, being this girl that could be swinging on a pole for different reasons other than exercise. <laughs> sure. I, I think it's exactly right. I mean, money, your mindset in any area of your life is the most important thing. So if you don't have a proper mindset around money, you're not going to make it. I hate to tell you. Um, I am someone that has pushed, clawed, torn, borrowed, not stolen, but you know, to make ends meet in order to make my dreams come true because I believed in it and I pushed through at that phase of life. Looking back, I don't know that I would ever do that again. I think that there's a more strategic way. When I coach people and they have these dreams, I'm like, do not quit your day job. Let's just figure out how to monetize your passion so you can be successful and have balance while you're doing it. But I'm grateful that I did it that way because I wasn't going to give up. I was not going to, you know, take a different road. And one when I did start to create financial success and start to show that I was on the right path, I realized really my mindset had changed around it. Whereas I used to wonder, how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna afford it? And that doesn't even occur to me anymore. The other day I had an idea. I said, you know what? 
I love how we're doing our show. I love filming in green screen, but I think it would be even more higher production value if we had a professional set. So it didn't cross my mind to say, how much is that going to cost? How are we going to do that? We're maxed out, you know. I was like, I wonder what I would like it to look like. And then I contacted a designer. Within 24 hours, she had designed the whole thing. Next morning, I have a meeting. That person said, you know, this is a little obscure, but I'm working with this furniture company. They do this amazing, who's now going to sponsor the set. It's like it just, because I didn't even have that thought of like, oh, we can't afford that. Oh, I can't. in six months, I'll do that. I was just like, this is what we're doing. I don't care if it costs $10,000. And within 72 hours, it was done. It was just like, bam, I didn't even have to do a thing. And I mean, I did. I masterminded the whole thing. But I believe that that comes from the money mind shift. And that is all about, you know, understanding your value and what you're placing in the world and that the right people will then be put in your path to support that. And a lot of times when there is that struggle, you know, I'm not for not working hard. I'm all about working hard. I'm usually up at 530 in the morning. I work, you know, last night I worked until 10 o'clock at night. Um, but I also think a lot of times, sometimes the universe is trying to show you something. If you're constantly not, if you're hitting your head, hitting your head, hitting your head, Mm -hmm. then, you know, perhaps look at that and where else can you monetize? And also you have to be strategic. You have to be a business person. A lot of times people in the healing fields, they think it's going to, Oh, I'm very fairy. It can be this. And I know I don't need money. I'm sorry, that's not going to work. You have to run your business like a business, no matter what you're doing. Absolutely. I completely agree with you on every level. I think that's the hardest part for people who are creative and or healing in their their purpose practice or their practice purpose. They get stuck in the heart and they never come up to the head because you have to have that element of yourself and to be business minded and to be strategic and be flexible and agile enough to understand that that strategy is gonna change along the way. You hit so many points, you and I could talk for hours and hours and hours and you already hit like two elements of the power five, which are all the things that we do to make sure that we can renew ourselves to continue along our path of pushing, whether that's in corporate or entrepreneur or whichever part of yourself you're tapping into in the moment. We talked about releasing negative energy. We talked about refueling ourselves. What do you do when you need to rest? What do you do? (laughs) So I'm an INFJ on Myers-Briggs. If anyone is familiar with Myers-Briggs, it's one of the rarest forms in that I'm actually extremely introverted. Mm -hmm. So my career, my days, what I do is extremely extroverted, but how I recharge is introverted. And so for me, I will just shut it down. I mean, I will make no plans, blinds are drawn. I, I know how to recharge. It might involve Ben and Jerry's, it might involve wine, it might involve an entire Netflix um, season of something in a, you know, in a whole Saturday. But I really know, I know it's, it's like a gas tank. You know, you look at your gas tank on your car and you see when it's low. When I have that feeling, I know I just need to completely disconnect. And I turn off my phone, I turn off everything, I spend time with the Gigi um, and Ginger, and then and then it just starts to come back a little bit. And then I'll ask myself, okay, what do I need? Do I need to do a cleanse? Do I need some yoga this week? Do I need to get some things off my plate? And I will do that. I've had to, I've also started other businesses and I've had to, you know, renegotiate and get out of that to allow myself to open up more for what I'm doing. And I become very clear with the notes. You know, I had to say no three times yesterday to people that one that wanted to come on the show that wasn't the right fit. One that wanted me to see their chocolate, amazing chocolateria, you know, found, and I just said, I, damn, I can't spend two hours doing that because I need to be a pole dancing because that would make, that's going to charge me. And, you know, and knowing that that's okay and, and looking, you know, and I think nutrition is critically important. Mm-hmm. I'm really good. I'll eat anything. Cheeseburgers are my favorite food, fancy ones, not, not McDonald's or anything. But, you know, the other whatever 20 meals out of the week they're healthy Mm -hmm. and that's really important too and that really fuels me and I know when I've maxed out like earlier this year I'm maxed out with the snowstorms I'm a California girl so I'm struggling with these New York winters and I looked out the window one day it was a Thursday afternoon and snow started to fall again and I was like that's it I went online I booked a trip a five-day trip to Jamaica I had the doggy camp come pick up ginger and the next morning I was on a plane And I just completely, for five days, didn't speak to anyone, didn't have my phone on. I read four books, like big, fat, 400-page chick books. And then I came back, and I was 
good to go. I was like, okay, that's, so, you know, sometimes you pass that, it's like running out of gas, and then you're like, okay, I gotta really intervene, and I'm on a plane to Jamaica. And, you know, so it's whatever it takes, but you have to do it. You can't let yourself get, again, it's a responsibility. You know, I do, I can't burn myself out because now I'm responsible for telling all of these people's stories. And that's what fuels me and drives me and makes me even more balanced, more militant about my schedule. Absolutely, because you know you're, work, you're walking in your purpose by fulfilling your work duties. And the reality is you can still get drained a little bit in that process because you're putting everything in. You have to take that time to literally balance yourself so you can continue to walk on the beam and not fall off and hit your face flat on the ground. That would not be cute. Um, I've done pole dancing once and I fell flat on my face and that was not cute. So <laughs> it's so hard. And I'm in, I'm in bare feet. I don't know how those, I honor those ladies that do do it in heels. And I mean, you know, and I'm just doing it for the feminine art and to be more, you know, in shape and flexible and so forth. But you know, and the other thing I'll say too that I think is so important that I've learned, Alex Madozian taught me this, he was one of my mentors, mm -hmm. is outsourcing. So sharpen your strengths, outsource your weaknesses. If there's things that you're not good at, don't spend hours and hours like, how do I tag this blog? Outsource it. I have a team of six people right now and we have an intern starting um, June 1st, full time thing. Thank you, universe. Um, that do all of the things because I can't do them all. In the beginning I did and it was way too much and then I couldn't focus on my executive coaching and what I do there. Um, even grocery shopping, I have, you know, cleaning services. I have people come and clean. I have dog walkers for ginger. I have groceries delivered that I know, okay, on this date they're coming because to me, I need those two hours. I can make X amount of money in two hours to pay for all of that, which is more beneficial. So, you know, learning where you can get things off your plate and where you can, you know, turn them over to other people. And having a good team is critical. I mean, our my team is beyond amazing. They're, they show up early, they work later, they do things I don't even ask them to do that I would if I thought of it. And that's really important to you is to build a team like that. Well, you raised a good point too, because you talked about delegating, leveraging other people's skills to kind of outsource so you can literally concentrate on what's a vital function for you. Um, Alex Mendozian is a great mentor as well. We definitely share a lot more in common than I realized. But one, one of the things that you mentioned was about that, you, you said it without saying it, is this is your way to refocus yourself so you can get back to what you're best at. Doesn't mean that you're, you're not good at those other things, but this is where you're best at, where your strengths lie. The problem for many people is they won't let go. They won't let go of those other tasks because they feel like on one hand, they could do it best. They don't want to take time to train anyone to, you know, give them the particulars. The other part is, of course, control. And you and I both know that it goes a lot deeper than just the word control. But many people don't understand the power of helping people share your vision so you can get there a lot smoother. I won't say faster, but a lot smoother to get to that destination if you're not adding 20 extra balls to the 35 you have just because you don't want to let go. Yes, very, very true. You know, I learned that from another power, and Alex is actually where I got Ginger. That was the person I was working for and his daughter was sick. And so I'm grateful, not only for a professional mentor, but he has probably been my biggest teacher. We're very close friends and have been and friends with his whole family and his children. And he has taught me so much through the gift of Ginger, through being just an incredible mentor as far as marketing, but also just a friend. He's one of the most loyal, um, going the extra mile, just considerate, amazing people that I've known in my career, and, and I'm always grateful. And another mentor that I had, um, John Asraf from the movie The Secret, we were business partners for a couple of years. We had an in-home vision board company. Um, that I had started and then I approached him because of his you know, wild success in The Secret and, and he was great, you know, we partnered for a couple of years and then decided he had so many projects on his plate and this was my passion and it's, you know, my baby and so forth. For him, it was one other business. He was interested and engaged in it. Mm -hmm. And so at a certain point, he just said, I'm sorry, I can't dedicate resources to this anymore. And I went back to running it myself, but I learned such a powerful lesson from him too, is that that's okay. That's not a failure. That's just something that you do. It's a smart business decision. And, you know, I'm constantly working on that with my executive coaching and my coaching clients of saying, 
is this a smart decision? Yeah, great idea, but what's your goal? Always going back, what's your outcome? What's your goal? Drive revenue. Is this going to drive revenue? No, it's fun. Okay, put it in the fun bucket. When you have the revenue, we'll go back to that bucket and take that out. So, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, you're you're amazing, incredible. And we, INFJ, we share that too. We share I, that too. Are you that too? Yes. I always attract each other. Alex is too. My best friend, Amber Salisbury, mm-hmm. is too. Mm-hmm. It's crazy how the mm-hmm. INFJs attract to each other because it, it's such a different, and I love it. People don't understand. They're always, when I want to be alone, they're trying to like, oh, join us for dinner. Or they'll send a friend over. I'm like, no, I love this. I lived with my cousin once for a couple months when I was starting the vision board company in Sacramento. And he is like beyond opposite. He is the quintessential like charges with people. So anytime he had to leave, he was like having neighbors come by and check on me. And I was counting the seconds until he was out, you know, so I could be like, okay, I need my INFJ time. But it's funny how you learn personalities and you, you know, learn how to work that way. No, I have to smile at that because most people don't understand a lot about personalities, including the fact that INFJs look extroverted to other people because we are social and we're sensing and we're intuitive and all those great things, but we really do value our private time. I had a friend of mine tell me a few years ago, Nikita, you're just way too private. You're just way too private. And I was like, "What what are you talking about? I'm as open as I need to be with what I need to be open with. And she was like, no, you're way too private for what you do in the line of business you are. People want to sneak peek in, especially in the day of Instagram and, you know, 15 second videos. Hi, I'm eating this today and take a look at my coffee here. And, and I'm like, I don't think about this when I'm working with clients and I'm busy working in my purpose. It's hard for me to remember. Take a picture of that. People want to share in the moment because they're just non I'm not even thinking about the fact that this really is a private moment for me. So I have to force myself to remember to do that. And that's where teams come in handy because they remind you of the things that you're not even thinking about, right? Yes. It's funny, you know, going back to the team and just a quick shout out. So we have, in addition to the six people that work on the show, I also have a staff that work on my business. And um, our social media director, Diana Hammond, she she tweets Facebook, Pinterest, links in as my voice. And um, she came on nine months ago, maybe. And I, I always forget that she's doing that. And then I'll go to my Facebook feed and I'll post something. And, like, I'll click on an article. I'm like, this is so interesting. And then I realize, oh, she's putting that there as if I did it. I mean, she's so dead on. And she does something polar opposite. She works in, like, a completely different scientific, medical, mm-hmm. different field. Mm-hmm. But yet she got it and she knows how to. And that those are the type of people that you need. You need to realize, wait, did I do this? Oh, no, I didn't. Oh. And she does a better job, quite frankly, than I would at, as myself. So, um, so yes, it's incredibly important to have the team to outsource those types of things that you can, and um, and that's really what creates balance in life. No, you're you're so right. She bought into. She's an example of probably everyone else on your team who's bought yes. into the vision of where you're going. So you're no yeah. longer just kind of delegating things. You're leveraging her skill set regardless of her professional hat of, you know, being a scientist or a chemist or whatever it is that she does in her, you know, quote unquote, real life, you're allowing her to tap into that creative part of herself that makes her feel good. And she's bought into your vision. So she understands your voice, which is why she can kind of clone you on social media and, and look really good and think the way that you didn't even think you were thinking at the time, but had you, you would have done it similarly. I think that that's incredible. Yeah, absolutely. It's really, really fun and exciting. And yeah, and just constantly looking at where you're spending your time, what are you doing? And, you know, another thing too is, um, I learned this too from an HR specialist, you know, it's hire slowly, fire quickly. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so you want to make sure you are getting the right people on your team and you are taking the time to get to know them and make sure that you have your culture. Like for me, I'm a zero drama um, I don't care how amazing the person is. If you start to bring any drama, it's done. And I used to not be that way. I would hold on to someone. I would try to work through things. I would, But now I, was, I, I have zero time for any of that. You know your job. You're definitely compensated You know the way that you should be. Mm-hmm. And I just want people that want to get on this mission bus. And by doing that and having that clarity, I mean, we brought on a sponsorship person the other day. 
um, two, twice actually in the last month where we where after the first day I was like oh this is not going to work and then I, I let it run its course for about a week or so and I immediately shut it down because I just know you know in life like you got to have the right people and what's funny is with the show we're getting a ton of positive just all day long I'm getting people referring other people that want to be on the show I can't even keep up with them but then occasionally you get one or two of the haters people are like well what's this or what channel is it on or and to me you know it hurts of course it's your baby it's but then I am so proud because I remember watching Tony Robbins or Oprah when Oprah did her whole empire and everything I remember watching an interview and she talked about that and how hard it is but it's also a sign that you are getting success and you are so I kind of I have a little game I play in my head I I expect one or two of those a week and I kind of like I laugh at them when they come um and then wish them well and send that energy back to wherever it came from but you know it's all of that is part of balance all of it is knowing you can't get devastated and I used to try to defend I used to be like oh no 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 let me show you what we're doing then and now I'm like ah, sorry I wouldn't even book you so it it and not in an arrogant way but again it's all part of life it's all part of balance and I'm just sharing the lessons that I've learned it's taken 20 years and tens of thousands of dollars of personal development and world-class mentors like Tony, Alex, Harvey, John Althrop, you know, all of those to learn these things. But it's, you know, I think they're valuable lessons. No, Bonnie, you hit such a good point, you know, in life period, even in your relationships, if it wasn't about business, there are going to be people who raise their head and hate, you know, why did you choose him? Why did he choose her? You know, what's this situation? Why? They, they're not a good match. They don't look good together. It's just a confirmation that you're doing what you need to be doing in that moment. And if you decide to stop dating him, if you decide to stop that business, that's a choice you're making independent of anyone else's opinion, especially when they're not bringing anything to the table. If you're an investor, um, sure, you can have a, you know, a comment to say. And in my relationship, if you were the official matchmaker or if you've done some kind of personality based testing on me and said, OK, maybe Nikita, you you know, look at the fact that you keep looking for people who aren't quite matching up. You can have a comment, but otherwise let people stay in their lane. I remember watching um, Bishop T.D. Jakes and he said the most powerful statement that stays with me forever the wolves are supposed to bark at the moon. The moon is not supposed to bark back. So just keep lighting and shining your light and doing what you're supposed to do. You're going to have wolves who are the haters come up and bark and howl at you. That's what they do. That's what they're supposed to do. You're supposed to stay in your lane and keep shining your light. And that stayed with me forever. So you hit such a good point. Um, speaking of reading, because you said you were reading these 400 page books uh, when you went to Jamaica, when you were taking your own time to kind of pause and relax and recharge. What's a good read that you would recommend to all the balance members who are out there right now listening, saying, I need something to fuel me. I need something to read. What would you recommend? So that's a great question. So I, I'll do the recommend from you know the human potential standpoint, but then I'll also give you a little insight to what I was reading. So um, what my main fascination right now is brain science, neuroscience. I love that. There's a great set of books called The Male Brain and the Female Brain that are a scientific account written by a doctor. I can't remember her name right now, but um, incredible books. It will change your life and how you relate to the opposite sex because it's just factual information from birth to nine years old of what's going on hormonally within a male or female brain. So those I totally recommend from that perspective. Um, I was reading chiclet books. So I read Candace Bushnell's new book. I think it was called um, One Fifth Avenue or something like that. Incredible, mm. big, thick book. Loved it. Um, just, you know, something to completely turn your mind off that is just interesting and fun and gossipy and exciting. I also read a very fascinating book called Brain on Fire, which kind of, I would say, goes both ways. So for me, it was, um, you know, something I picked up at the airport. I didn't know how heavy it was going to be, but it was about this, I think, 24-year-old girl, true story. She worked for, I think, the New York Post, and um, just night and day, all of a sudden, kind of went a little bit crazy as she was diagnosed. They couldn't figure out what was wrong with her. Fast forward, it turns out she had this crazy form of encephalitis. 
um, and was hospitalized for months at a full recovery and now tells her story. She has no recollection during those periods. She recounted her story because she's a very highly trained journalist um, through medical records and some video footage that they had. Fascinating book, but mostly because of just the human spirit and overcoming. And when you read what she went through, it's mind boggling. And um, and to see her have pushed through, and now she's become a light for other people. She's become, you know, a source that anyone going through. Apparently, a lot of people have this illness. It's a very rare type of encephalitis, mm. and it strikes. Um, so anyway, that was very inspiring to me because again, here's a person that has tremendous courage and not only goes through a catastrophic experience, but then decides to become a light for other people. And I really respect and honor that. That they are all amazing books. I'm really addicted to neuroscience for some reason right now too. So that was really interesting. You gave me two great recommendations, um, yeah. the male brain and the female brain. I love it. I have to say that you have been an incredible guest. Uh, more incredible than I would have ever imagined you to be. You've shared so much on so many layers of who you are and how you're balancing on the balance beam. Thank you so much. And thank you for putting up with my voice today. It's a little scraggly for whatever reason. Allergy season is taking over and stinging nettle for some reason is not working today. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Little Gingy, thanks everybody for allowing her to come on the show. And thank you so much. You are also such a light. I'm so grateful that we have met. And I just really look forward to seeing how we collaborate. I know you're coming on the Ask Bon Bon show. Yes! Oh, we are so here. So it's going to be great. We're going to have so much fun together in the studio. But I really honor um, and respect and am grateful for the work that you're doing in the world. And thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Bonnie. Tell everyone how they can connect with you, especially while they wait for Ask Bon Bon to hit airways. How can they reach you if they want to share a story, comment on your Facebook? How can they get to you? Sure. Thank you for asking. The easiest way, if you're interested in being a guest on our show, we're always looking for great guests. And so the easiest way is bookings at bonnieannbruderer.com. Um, so that, if you're interested in being on the show, if you want to get our shows, we email them out every week, and that, you just go to my website, bonnieandruder.com, um, register your email, and we'll send you the, the show. There's no charge, there's nothing. This is our passion project. So we'll send you the show every week, a different, incredible one or two entrepreneurs or experts or people that we interview. And then all of our social media icons are at the bottom there. So you can follow us on Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, Skype, however you want to connect with us. We make it very easy for you to find us. But um, that's that's the best way, bonnieandbruder.com. I have to say, Bonnie is amazing. Did I say that enough? I think that's like the 20th yeah. time I said it. Let me say it five more. Amazing, 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 amazing. Make sure you follow up and you get on her list. If nothing else, get everything she has to offer because she's moving into great spaces and I wanna make sure that you guys can move with her to just help illuminate her light. If nothing else, give your light and your energy to her as well. Thank you, Bonnie, so much for being with us. Balance Beamers, I want you to stay right there because we'll be back with more tools you can infuse. Welcome back. I'm your host, Nikita Thigpen, and this is an empowerment moment. Empowerment moments are something that I created years ago that were previously just deemed mint moments. The mint is unique, and it's M-I-N-T for mint moment, which stands for my I need to moments. These are things that started with me. I needed to say these things to myself, speaking life into myself and the things that I wanted to become, the challenges to myself that I needed to take, and the next steps in my self-reflection. These were all personal things that I decided to publicize. I started with Facebook and then I started to put it on my website and other places and folded it into my websites, my blogs, and so on and so forth. With that, it has taken on a steam of its own, and I wanted to give it to you in a new way. Instead of just posting a meme with a pretty picture of myself or a great background of my logo and sharing what used to be called another mint moment, now an empowerment moment, with you that way, I decided to take a few minutes at the end of each podcast and share with you some empowerment just for you. 
today I want to talk about showing up as your best and allowing other people to journey with you to better. That is your mid moment. That's something you need to take home and say to yourself. You need to understand that your best is good enough because it's where you are right now. Allow people into the humanity of you and let them see you get better. You're always going to have people that disagree with you, that hate on you, for lack of a better term, but there are lots of people who support you because they can relate to the growth of you. They identify with where you are, or you might even be at your best where they hope to be in their better. So I hope that you take this empowerment moment with you as you choose to become who you are today and improve who you are tomorrow.